You're watching the Home Design Mentor channel on YouTube. All right, welcome back. We're working on lesson number two, the base cabinets. We're gonna go into more detail about what we do with our base cabinets here. I'm first gonna divide this long countertop that we have that's on the outside wall of the house. And the center of it is where the sink is gonna go. And I'm gonna make a 36 inch wide sink cabinet. Then I'm gonna have two six inch wide details on either side of that that we'll get to here later, which will be a lot of fun to put together. Then I have a 48 inch wide, a 48 inch wide, and then a 24 inch wide, and that will happen on both sides of that sink. This is a pretty big kitchen. It's 28 feet long in total. So we have lots of space for lots of cabinets here. I'm gonna take my face frame that we created in lesson one and duplicate that, take away some of those profiles that are attached to it there that we can leave in the other part of it. Duplicate this, and again, what we're doing is we're creating that door and drawer front that we worked on in the last lesson, and then just duplicating it several times to get us a good start on showing what we're gonna have for a base cabinet for this kitchen. You'll see there, I just duplicate and duplicate as we go down, go back, looks, looks good, that worked out. Now, we need to go in here for our sink cabinet door. That is only 18 inches wide, so we take our face frame, we go in, we make unique, we edit component, and shorten it by six inches. Then we have to do that for our drawers. So we go in, we open up the drawers, and then we shorten it by six inches, and then we do the same thing with the door that is below it. Then we duplicate that, very simply, and that will be the face of our sink cabinet. So, we have that well started now, and we want to go back and look at, let's see here, let's duplicate this front. What we need to do now is we need to make a bank of drawers instead of making just a drawer and door cabinet. So, typically what you have on a bank of drawers is shallower drawer at the top, and then you have three drawers below it, which are usually equal in depth. So, very simply, I divide that lower portion into three parts, then go back and put in the frame that will divide those drawers, get that in there, because remember we have a inset cabinet, so we have a frame around everything. We have a frame around each drawer, each door. Get those in there, then we go back up to that drawer component, and we need to make it larger. So once again, we go back in and make it unique, put it in place, edit component, and then stretch it up to fit in our deeper drawer space. And then we simply duplicate that and multiply it by two to fill in our drawer bank that we've now created. Then we can take that drawer bank and, oh, I wanna show you something here. See, this, see these two uh, panels on either side of the sink? Those are going to be the dishwashers. But what we'll do is make a panel ready dishwasher and so it will look like the cabinets instead of looking like a dishwasher. That's a custom feature that a lot of high-end kitchen designers will put in their designs. Then I'm gonna go back and duplicate that 18 inch wide door and drawer and put it over here because I have two 36 inch wide cabinets which will be on either side of my range, my 60 inch range. Once again, I duplicate that. Then I want to duplicate this drawer front and put it over here on this side of the kitchen as well to give us a sense of what we're going to be doing with that column of cabinets there. So we have that. Go back, this is another 18 inch wide cabinet face here on the far left. We're gonna put one of those in there so we have something to work with and get started with there. All right, so on, we've established our base cabinets around the outer edges of it. But you know what? I think what we need to do here on the range is instead of having 
doors below the drawers here, what we would really like to have are two deep drawers plus the drawer above it. So I'm going to take our drawer bank and modify it so that it has two deep drawers below the standard top drawer depth. It's simply a matter of going into our face frame component and making it unique and altering it to hold a division of two instead of a division of three. Very simple that you, how you do that. That's in there, set up the frame so that it goes all the way through, all the way back. I have to reverse faces often just because I like the faces to be uh, the same all the time. Then I take our drawer component face, make it unique once again, then bring it up to fit into that deeper drawer detail. Also, I'm gonna go back here and duplicate that, bring it up into place, very simple. And there we have a bank of drawers. Now, it's not wide enough. So we're gonna, once again, go in and take the face frame and make it wider. We're going from 24 inches to 36 inches. So we go in that face frame. We've already made it unique. We stretch it a foot. Same thing with our drawer. We go in, we're gonna stretch it a whole foot. And then, of course, the ones below it will be stretched a foot as well. And there we have a completed triple drawer bank, deep drawers that we can put on either side of our big 60 inch wide range that we'll have in this kitchen. So I put that in place, that fits there. Pop that in, get rid of those, get rid of that, then take that, duplicate it, and put it on the other side. So we have that matching on either side. You'll see what I do in this is I try to make everything as symmetrical as possible in something like this because this is a traditional classical architectural design and we want that balance in this kind of design. Now I'm going to duplicate our drawer bank again, and I'm going to go over here and get rid of some doors. I've got too many doors on this side, so I'm going to put that into place. That goes next to the dishwashers, and I'm going to need to do that on the other side as well. So let's copy, let's get rid of that door bank, and get our drawer bank, and there we've got that in place. Now, another thing I want to do here, I think, is I want to put in another bank of drawers on the far ends of this long countertop and cabinet, base cabinet here. So that's what I'm doing right there. That's very simple. So we have a really good start. Now, on this sink cabinet, what I'm gonna do is bring these faces out six inches. And on either side of that sink, we're going to create some columns and we're gonna start that here in just a moment but that will make that a feature, make it a focal point for the kitchen. I mean, it is the sink and that usually is like the, the, the center point of your kitchen design is where your sink is located. So we wanna give it some emphasis and some architectural features to it. I'm gonna move that door frame out of the way. And now let's see, we need to start that column. I'm gonna make a six inch square and draw it up to three feet tall. And then it has a base to it or a baseboard to it. You'll see here in our kitchen design, we're going to uh, copy what they've done on that detail. And so we start with the base of this square block and we create a base molding. We're going to make it three quarters of an inch thick. That's coming out three quarters of an inch. And then we can start blocking out what we'll do here. It's really pretty simple. The lower portion is just a rectangle but then it takes a detail as it goes to the top and terminates before it gets to the face of the column that's above it. But this is a very typical molding that you can find, a baseboard type molding that you can find in, in traditional design, traditional architecture. What I need to do first is create a short square there at the base of this line that I'm creating and then go back and look. You can see here as we zoom in on this, there it is, that's what we're going for. So you can see there's a, it's 
straight up and down on the bottom three quarters of it. And then we have a detail and it goes in. And then we have another detail that's small at the top that it terminates to. So we have those two rectangles. Then we're going to uh, make another straight line to give it a little more emphasis outward. Then we move up the bottom just a little bit to make the proportion better. Then I go in here and I create a diagonal line and make this sort of an S curve is what you could call it. And that gives us a molding shape, which will now become our baseboard for this kitchen and for this column detail that we're creating. And we're gonna make that a component. That's our profile. We're gonna duplicate it. And then we're gonna make a component unique and make a base for this column. You'll see how we do that here in just a moment. There's, I'm gonna position this so that it will go back far enough because uh, I know where I'm going with this, but trust me, we'll get to why I did that later. But once again, we uh, make lines where we want this follow me to go and we make that happen. We reverse the faces and there we have a baseboard for our column started. We're gonna move that other profile back a little bit just to kind of get it out of the way for the moment. Then it, we go back to the top of this column and we're gonna create a square. And on that square, we're gonna start our block floret design. You'll see that there in our kitchen. And I'm gonna grab that very first drawer front profile and bring it over here and use that to, to, to start this block floret detail. So you'll see here, I'm gonna take that piece off. I'm going to make this a little bit shallower. It's too deep for what we're trying to create here. So let me bring that over here to the left. Then let me work on that depth, bring that inward. It doesn't need to be three quarters. We're just looking for a face frame molding detail there. But we wanna use a similar detail that we have on our drawers so that we have a consistent use of line. So we take that, we copy our square, we take the lines of the outside of the square, we join that to our molding profile and poof, follow me tool makes it all happen. And there you can see that's where we're going with this. Back in the picture of the kitchen that we're working from. And now I have a block florette base that we can start working with. And that concludes today's lesson number two base cabinets on the super mega mansion kitchen that we're designing together here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like.